Hello, thank you for stopping by Kyle's blog. This is Kyle's 87th video. And in this video here, I'm going to start in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning with verse 23. And in this video, I'm going to speak on coming to the place where you're not offended at anybody. And this is something that's really difficult, but it's something that Jesus was able to do in his walk. And if we truly wish to have a completely fruitful ministry, we have to learn to be the same way. And it's something that, that, that's so difficult. And I think many of us, if not any of us, are perfected at it. It's very difficult, but it's very crucial and very important to be this way, both with those who are unsaved and those who are saved, not to become offended at words or different things that they might say to us, but remain in the godly sort of character that we have to keep and, and be a picture of to those in the world, literally being Christ-like in our composure, in our character, and in all things. So it's very important, very difficult, but very important to not be offended really at anything that anybody would do or say to us. The, the example here in 1 Peter 2 verse 23 is Jesus. And it says of him, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And if we think back in the gospel, of Jesus here, we we, we, we see here that, that, that Jesus was accused of having a demon. He was accused of not being of God and all these different things. But Jesus didn't let any of these things prick his heart to the point that he would fight back against these people. And those were the religious who were saying especially those type of things to him. Those who were, you could say, were his brothers. He refused to become offended at them and fight back in words. To those who were unsaved, the Gentiles, they began to mock him, to kneel before him and say, Hail the king, though they really didn't mean it in their hearts. To these people also, he did not fight back against with words or anything else. He chose in all things to commit himself to God. And we need to be the same way. No matter what anybody would say to us or accuse us of, we have to come to the place that we won't be offended and fight back with a spirit of anger or, or, or strife, because that's of the devil. Now, Jesus, at times when he was attacked, did explain and say, no, it's it's not a demon and whatnot, and, and he explains what he did. But notice, he didn't give in to a spirit of strife and attack, and we can't do that either. A beautiful, a beautiful example of this is going to be in the book of 1 Samuel, and I'm going to turn over there really quick. And 1 Samuel, the book has to do with Hannah, who is seeking a child and she's unable to get one so she's under a lot of torment and her husband actually married her he married Hannah and he also married another woman the other woman had children but Hannah didn't and the other woman actually ridiculed Hannah because she didn't have any children so you can imagine that she was very 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 tormented in this so so she comes to the place then that she's going to pray then before God about this. And 1 Samuel, this is the first chapter, beginning with verse... Oh, let's say verse 9. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon his seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. So Hannah now is very tormented by this, and weeping out to the Lord. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. So now she's seeking God for a child. And, and, and she's dedicating this child to the Lord if she, gets, if, if she gets this child. Verse 12, And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Eli the priest noticed her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away, put away thy wine from thee. So Eli, now, don't, don't judge Eli too harshly here for saying this, for automatically assuming that she was drunk, because this was the time of Israel when every man did what was right in his own eyes. People didn't really care about the proper way of following the Lord. 
They wish to simply follow God on their own terms, which isn't how we're supposed to walk with God. So Eli was a priest in a time when it was a very dark time in Israel. So though he approached Hannah wrong, still don't judge him too harshly. And though he approached her in a wrong manner, notice Hannah's response. A lot of people of Eli a priest, a preacher, were to come up to them and respond to them in this way, a lot of people would attack the preacher or priest and say, I'm pouring my heart out to God and you're coming up to me and attacking me. And we are not to respond that way. Notice how Hannah responds to Eli, the priest, who just accused her of being drunk, though she was pouring her heart out to God. Verse 15, she responds this way, And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. So in this text here, we see a woman of God and a man of God. The man did approach her wrongfully, but regardless, Hannah didn't let her it, it destroy her spirit and open up a spirit of strife. She chose instead to respond in a manner of grace and kindness and respect to the man of God for his position. And because really she was a woman of God, she had the heart of God in her. And we must respond the same way in different circumstances such as this. Don't allow strife to come into your life and destroy relationships with the children of God or even with those on the outside who are unsaved. Because you can never convince anybody who is unsaved, who is of the fallen nature, if all you do is attack them and rail them and try to argue with them to receive Jesus. It's not going to work. Always remember it's a hard issue. So she responded in a kindful, godly way. Verse 19, and now we're going to see the results of what comes to place upon Hannah. Verse 19, and they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house to Ramah and Elkanah knew Hannah his wife and the Lord remembered her. Verse 20, wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And because she responded the way she did, the Lord ended up remembering her, remembering her prayer, and she received the child that she desired. She got what she desired. She kept a godly character. She kept love in her life. And we have to be the same way. Don't allow any doors of strife to come and destroy your relationships. Even if strife and contention does come to pass, don't let it destroy your relationship, especially in terms of a brother or sister in Christ. Think of Paul and Barnabas in the book of Acts. They came to a contention, and they ended up splitting ways and going off in a different area in their ministry. But regardless, they didn't allow that to destroy the love that they had for each other and especially the love that they had for God and they still were men of God. Don't let anything come to the place that it will just destroy the love that you have for each other in Jesus Christ. Don't allow the door to open for strife but stand strong and be as Jesus, not exchanging reproach or arguments for reproach and arguments. I thank you for stopping by Kyle's blog. God bless. Have a great day.